Praise the Lord and good evening and welcome to our Biblical Foundations class uh, tonight here on uh, Friday. And we are uh, thankful to the Lord for you being here tonight. And uh, we just give God the praise for all things. Amen. Uh, we have some uh, prayer requests. As a matter of fact, i got to grab that. Hold on for a second. Get our prayer, prayer requests. Hold on. Okay, got it right here. Praise the Lord. Okay. Well, here we go. Um, prayer request. We have a uh, prayer for uh, Coco and Shannon Seward as they get ready to travel and drive back over this way. Uh, they've been visiting over on, uh, they're visiting their relatives over in Idaho and they're coming back here to Washington. So let's keep uh, Coco and Shannon in prayer. Also, um, just uh, continue to pray for uh uh, Teresa Kennespel's uh, friend's husband, he's uh, recovering from uh, the uh, surgery that he had, and uh, just keep him in prayer as he continue for a continued recovery. Well, let's go to the Lord in a word of prayer. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, we do thank you and praise you for, um, for answering prayer. You are so good to us. We're so thankful for you. We're so thankful for what you do in our lives and what you're doing in, your, in all of your people around the world. Lord, I thank you for your word today, and I thank you for for how you um, take care of us. I pray for Coco and Shannon as they travel. Please give them safe traveling mercies. Teresa's uh, friend's husband, as he recovers from his surgery, Lord, just continue to help him get well and recover quickly. Pray for um, Wayne, uh, Kay's husband, as is, is, uh, he is dealing with an immense amount of pain. Just pray that the doctors are able to help him um, you know get a, get that under control and figure out exactly what's going on and Lord we we thank you tonight for each one that's able to join us and we praise you for that in Jesus name amen and amen well uh, praise the Lord for you being here tonight and as you know there's been oh, lots of things happening in the you know in the news as we watch and we look and we and we see all of these things um, are things that the Lord talks about in His Word, you know, things that are warnings to us to uh, to watch, to pray, to be alert, to be ready for that day when the Lord returns. We don't know the day or the hour, but we know that these things that we see happening, uh, scriptures told us a long, long time ago uh, that these kind of things would be occurring before the return of Jesus. So, praise God, we're just going to get into the study tonight and we're talking about last things you know things that are in the last days and again um don't fall into the trap of trying to uh nail down a day or hour you you can't do it because the lord jesus said that that was in the father's hands you know he's he's the only one that knows and as a matter of fact our mission is not to um you know, just get in and try to figure out the day and the time and all that. Our, our, the reason we're giving these warnings in the scripture, we're, the reason we're giving all these descriptions of what's happening and when they're happening kind of thing, you know, it, and when I say when is, you know, as they, they progress because they get worse and worse, these things that are occurring. Uh, the Lord tells us this so we will have that, that sense of urgency about the mission that we've been called to do is to get the gospel to every human being on the planet, every creature. Get out there and tell people the good news about Jesus because time is running out, you know. And sometimes we don't we don't really have a good look at that and we don't consider the the brevity of our own lives because we get caught up with day-to-day -day things or this person's doing this or this group's doing that. And when really we need to be getting into the Word of God and realizing that the time is very short. Jesus is coming soon, and there are souls that need to be won to into the kingdom of God, and we have a big job to do. And so that should be one of the, the main driving things for us is, is realizing there's people that are dying each and every day, whether it, it be with COVID or whether it be traffic accidents or cancer or, or you know, a multitude of different things. Um, People are dying each day without Jesus Christ, and that's a tragedy, because if you die without Christ, there is no hope. 
So our great hope is Christ, and he is the one that each one of us needs to be clinging to, holding to, and, and proclaiming as, as, as long and as loudly as we can, telling people the good news of Jesus Christ. Now, when I say loudly, it doesn't mean you're screaming at people because that doesn't work, okay? But show the love of Christ. Be, be bold in your faith, and don't be hesitant to share Jesus with, with anyone and everyone. Okay, so last week we started looking at 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 1 through 11, and then we went over to Matthew chapter 24, and we started looking at its connection here with, with 1 Thessalonians. So let's go back to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 1 to 11. Let's read that. But of the times and of the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. For, your, for yourselves you know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye brethren are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. But ye are all the children of light, and the children of the day. We are not of the night, nor of darkness. Therefore let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, for helmet the hope of salvation. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as ye also you do. So, the context of what he's talking about here, Paul was, was bringing out the fact that the times and the seasons, he didn't have a need for them him to write unto them, because they know perfectly the day of the Lord comes as a thief in the night. Now, the day of the Lord is coming quickly upon, upon the earth. And if we go over to Matthew chapter... Actually, I want to go to Matthew chapter 25. I want to show you something in Matthew 25. Well, yes, but we should do 24 first. Okay, go to 20, 24 first, and then we'll go to 25. Uh, chapter 24, let's take a look at some of the... Uh, the Lord puts down uh, these parables here you know, some examples and uh, what's going on. And I want to take a good look at this. It says, um, because he talks about in verse 42, but we're going to back it up. Let's go to uh, Matthew chapter 24, and let's look at verse 35, starting at 35. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. But of that day... And hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. So right there, again, what we're saying is, the day and the hour that the Lord returns, only the Father knows it. Not even the angels in heaven know that. Only the Father. But, and here's, here's verse 37. But, as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as... In the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away, so also, or so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Uh, then two shall two be in the field, one shall be taken, the other left. Two women shall be grinding at the mill, the one shall be taken, and the other left. Watch therefore. You know not what hour your Lord doth come. So, stopping right there, I want to take you a close look at this. It says, you know, he gives a comparison here about the return of the Lord. He gives a comparison. Um, as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Now, we can take that comparison and say, oh, well, you know, let's look at the days of Noah. and You know, the hearts of people were wicked and, you know, only evil continually it's what the scripture says you know that, that it, they were doing the everything that they could imagine wickedly that they were doing but that's actually not the whole point of what he's saying here because it, you can't really separate 37 and 38 you need to put them both together because it's, 
it's a continuation of thought here. So let's look at verses 37 38. But as, as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. So, putting just taking this verse over here and this one over here, applying it separately, put it together. Verses 37, 38, 39 show that that in this time when the flood came, people's lives be, right before the flood were carrying on with normal activities. Now we know the nature of their heart was only evil continually. We know that. From the Old Testament tells us that what was going on and why the Lord judged the, the earth and destroyed it, uh, except for Noah and his family, he found, Noah found grace in his sight. But the people in life were going about their daily, daily business. They were eating, drinking, marrying, giving marriage, caring about life as normal until the day that Noah entered the ark. And the flood came and took them all away. And it says here, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. When the Lord Jesus Christ returns, life will have been going on here before that day. Life will be continuing as it is. Now he's given us some things and told us what's going to be happening in the world and the events and things like that. But life in it, people's lives will be continuing to go forward until that day. You see, what man thinks is he thinks that God's judgment doesn't fall on him for sin. So he can continue in sin. And God's okay with it. But God's not okay with it. He's not okay with the sin of mankind. He's not okay with the rebellion of mankind. Rebellion has been happening since the garden, and rebellion happened in heaven when Satan rebelled against God. Rebellion is, the Bible says, is it's the sin of witchcraft, you know. Rebellion is evil, sinful, and it's, it's something that Christians should have absolutely nothing to do with. When Christians rise up and say, well, I refuse to do this, what God says here, I'm not going to... That's rebellion. Rebellion. When God says to do something in his word and you say, I'm not gonna, that's rebellion. You know, we, we see that in little toddlers, kids, you know, when they, you know, mom and dad try to tell them to go to bed and they, I don't want to. You know, it's rebellion. It's in the heart of a child. You know, you, you have, that's why you have to correct children. You have to discipline children. Why? Because you have to teach them. There's consequences for our actions. And if you don't teach them that, then... We end up with prisons full of adults who feel like there should be no consequences for their actions. Um, but there are. And, uh, you know, the, the judgment from God is going to be coming on this earth. He really goes into a lot of detail on, those, on the pouring out of his wrath and his judgment upon the earth in the book of Revelation. He goes into great detail concerning what he's going to do in the pouring out of his wrath. Um, I will tell you that it is something that um, is quite horrible, really, you know, and it's something that you would not want to be experiencing. You know, there's an escape from that. It's in Christ. If, you know, Christ suffered the wrath of God for us, if you have your faith in Jesus Christ, you're in the ark. And, you know, in the midst of the storm, in the midst of the flood, right? Mm -hmm. no safe in the ark his family and those animals that they had in the ark they were safe god protected them in that ark right jesus is the ark for for us he is our protection he is our he is the one who saves our souls so when the wrath of god comes upon the earth which it will the bible is very clear about this in multiple multiple places um well when the wrath of god it comes if you're in christ you are protected from that wrath god will keep you god will protect you you know, you're safe in, in Christ, but outside of Christ, you're experiencing the full wrath of God, and you can't stand. You, you won't be able to. It says here, uh, verse 42 says, Watch therefore, for you know not what hour your Lord doth 
come. And so we don't know the hour, but we're supposed to, what, watch. And watching is not uh, idle. Again, watching is not an idle thing. We're just not, you know, sitting and looking up and waiting and doing nothing. But watching is expectantly waiting, preparing, doing the things that we're supposed to do as we wait for our Lord to return. I'm going to show you this, and let's look at this next verse, uh, verse 43, Matthew chapter 24, verse verse, uh, verse uh, praise the Lord, 43. But know this, that if the good man of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would have not suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore, be also ready, for in such an hour as you think not, the Son of Man cometh. And so here he's given an, another example of how to watch. It said, if a good man of the house had known what hour, had known, um, if the good man of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched. and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Isn't that true? If you knew the, the exact time of night, if you knew the range of night, when the, when the, thief was getting ready to break in your house you would be up and you would be preventing that thief from breaking in your house right um you because you would be watching you'd be waiting and you know it's watching and waiting is not just laying in your bed and with your covers up and just you know well i'm just gonna lay here and wait till the thief comes you know you'd probably uh be fully fully dressed and fully alert and waiting and you know uh you would not just be idle You'd be doing something. Now let's take a look here. He says here, um, Therefore be also ready for in such an hour as you think not, the Son of Man cometh. And this tells me that even though we're watching and we're waiting, you know, in such an hour as you think not, the Son of Man cometh. So when the time that you are expecting is not the time. He may be, you know, it's be a different time. The thing is, is, is you know, people get lulled even today, people get lulled into this, um, this, I don't know, they, it's like they've lost their expectation. There's so many people out there that have lost their expectation of the return of Christ. You know, as, as if, you know, they know that he's coming back, but it doesn't spur them to joy. It doesn't spur them to action, to get out and tell people about Jesus. It doesn't spur them to do anything. They just sit there, and, and they're happy to just sit there. And, and they, feel, they feel that, well, you know, they have a relationship with the Lord, therefore they, they're good to go. But that's not right. Because if you are a servant of the Lord, you should be a faithful servant of the Lord, not a wicked servant, right? You know, um, look at this next verse. It says in verse 45, let's read that. Who then is a faithful and wise servant whom his Lord hath made ruler over his household to give them meat in due season? Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, find, uh, shall find so doing. Verily I say unto you that he shall make him ruler over all his goods. So look what he's doing. Look at what this servant is doing. He's watching. He's waiting for his Lord. But he's, he's a faithful and wise servant, right? And he gives, what does he do? He, Lord, whom his Lord hath made ruler over his household, give them meat in due season. Blessed is that servant um, whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find him so doing. What? Giving them meat. What is the, what is the meat? What is meat? You know, it, meat is food, obviously. Yes, of course it's food. Is it more than that? Well, you know, desire the sincere milk of the word, right? And then Paul says that we need to, we need to go on from, from that milk, right? to the meat of the word you know this is our food you know this is our this we desire the word of god more than our necessary food see god's word is what you're giving to people god's word is what you're feeding people with jesus said that you know he um he's the bread of life right doing the will of god it was his meat indeed you know the the thing is is giving god you know, giving God's word, living his word, giving his word to people. This is taking care of people. This is how we're supposed to be. This is what we're supposed to be doing. Ministering his word. You don't have to be a preacher to do that. You have to be a Christian to do that. If you're a Christian, you, your business is giving God's word to people. Telling people about Jesus Christ. Not, 
not just you know pushing putting it off on the preacher it's not just the preacher that needs to get that word out it's all of us we all have to do that amen and be faithful be faithful doing that and, he, and God says that you know you're blessed when you when he comes and finds you doing it says um, verily I say unto you that he shall make him ruler over all his goods but what but there's a warning let's look at verse 48 there's a warning but if I, if that evil servant shall say in his heart my Lord delayeth his coming and shall begin to smite his fellow servants and to eat and drink with the drunken the Lord of that servant shall come in a day when he looketh not for him, in an hour when he's not aware of, and shall cut him asunder and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So we saw what would happen with a faithful servant and what a faithful ser servant should be doing. But here's one that's an evil servant, still servant, right? Still servant. Don't miss that part. But this evil servant says in his heart, my Lord, again, he's claiming that Jesus is his Lord, right? My Lord delayeth his coming. And because his, his coming is delayed, what does he begin to do? He begins to smite his fellow servants. He begins to fight and argue and bicker and, and, and cause division and strife with his brothers and sisters in Christ. He begins to fight with them. And then he begins to eat and drink with the drunken. Instead of fellowshipping with his brothers and sisters in Christ, he's out there fellowshipping with people who are completely in rebellion against God. Drunken. You know, um, the false church, you know, the mystery Babylon, the Bible tells us about, is drunken with the blood of the saints. You know, it's not a, it's not a far leap from this when a person is is turns away from Christ they turn against everything that's for Christ and we see this happen we see this happen it's like when people who maybe once lived for Jesus when they if they turn from Jesus well the bible tells us that you know when the demon is cast out right you know it, it wanders around through the dry places and brings back what seven worse than itself and the last state of the man's worse than the first when if you're following jesus christ and you turn away from christ let me just tell you you're worse you are worse in that condition than you ever were before you came to christ you're worse and what's horrible is that the people that know jesus that know that he's the only way, that know that there's only life in him, when they turn their backs on him and reject him and trample on the blood of Christ and count it as an unholy thing, there's no hope for them. They're lost. Lost. This is why, you know, uh, pray for people. If a person starts to backslide, they don't become a backslider, a full-blown backslider in uh overnight the bible talks about they become a backslider in heart first and so sometimes people will will cool off in their in their passion for the lord remember your love growing cold so as they stop sharing so much about the word of god they stop talking about the word of god they stop praying they stop fellowshipping they just slowly begin a trend of a, a downward trend the sad thing about downward trends, if you've ever been on a hill and start a downward, uh, start downward motion, you find that you start picking up a whole lot of speed heading straight down. The faster as you, as you progress down, you pick up speed. You know, soon enough you crash into the bottom. This is why if you see a person struggling in their walk, in their faith, start praying for them. Get your hand out there and, and get a hold of them and say, hey, Jesus loves you. Reach out to them because it's not too late. It's not too late. God God is merciful. He's great. And he is, he is so long-suffering. He will work with these people. Even this evil servant that's just described here. Opportunity. Opportunity. But he was, instead of hearing, you know, these, his fellow servants, he begins to smite him. Beat him. The Lord of his, that servant will come in a day when he looketh not for him and in an hour that he's not aware of. And that's how death comes to, to people too. You know? 
uh, I was talking to uh, I was talking to a young man tonight that uh, he knows about the Lord. He's been taught about the Lord. He uh, came from a Christian family that uh, loved Jesus. He's he's been thoroughly instructed. You know, he's actually uh, even uh, went to camps and, and, and things. And uh, this young man is uh, living a life of a rebellion against God. And God keeps on faithfully reaching out to this young man and, and sending people his way, sending Christians. And, and he'll, he'll have Christians come up to him at different places and tell him, hey, you know, I want to invite you to come to church or, you know, invite you here. You know, he puts people in this, in this young man's uh, workplace he puts people, you know, Christians in these places to testify about Jesus and to witness to this, this man. God is working to try to reach this guy. And this guy has been uh, playing a game with God, running from God, trying to, trying to hide from all of these people that God sends his way. Well, I told him that I said, you know, death comes to everyone. And death comes when you least expect it. And soon enough, you might run out of time. God's been granting you time to repent, time to get right with him, time to come to Christ. But that time may just run out for you. And you, want, you need to think about that. Is there anything on this planet, in this world, worth going to hell for? Is there anything worth spending an eternity and in suffering is there anything on this planet you know that's worth going to hell for no jesus jesus was real clear about that what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his own soul so no there's nothing on this planet worth going to hell for but jesus christ he made the way of salvation available for all you know if you come to christ you can be saved you come to christ you can be forgiven. You come to Christ, you can have a new life. So, I'll continue to pray for this young man and, and continue to, to witness to him as the Lord Lord allows, and uh, we'll see. But he was definitely, uh, he definitely took some time to think about what, what I was telling him. And you can see that the Lord is working on his heart. So, the problem is, is that as God works on your heart, don't harden your heart. If you harden your heart, man, you put yourself in a very dangerous place because you callous yourself against this, the gospel. You callous yourself against what God, God's trying to do. You harden your heart. Remember, Pharaoh did that, right? He, he hardened his heart. It didn't end so well with Pharaoh. So let's not do that. And let's pray for those that are in this, this type of situation, as, as God says. God says here, that uh, the Lord of that servant shall come in the day when he looketh not for him in an hour that he's not aware of, and shall cut him asunder and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So, you know, the Lord letting you know, is there a cost for rejecting Christ? Is there a cost for walking away? You know, Jesus said that if you put your, your hands to the plow and look back, you're not worthy of the kingdom. So, you know, is there a cost here? There is a cost. Yeah, there is. You don't want to turn away from Christ. You want to, if anything, you want to double your efforts. You want to, you want to get in there and do for the Lord. Not because your works save you. That is not it. If you think that that's the point of it, you're wrong. That's not the point. Only Christ can save you, okay? Your works don't save you. But those works that we do after we come to Christ... They show their evidence of our love for Christ, our obedience to Christ. You know, love and obedience go together, guys. They're not two separate things. They go together. And we, we've talked about this before. Jesus said, you love me, keep my commandments. Love and obedience. They go together. If you say you love him, you, you don't obey his commandments, the Bible says you're a liar. You see what I mean? So love and obedience go together. So when we, we come to Christ and he's our, he's our Lord and our Savior, we, the evidence of our love is our obedience to his word. We go and do these things because we love him. We go reach out to the lost with the gospel. Why? Because we love them. The most hateful thing that you could do is not tell somebody about Jesus. It's the most hateful thing you could do. You know the truth. 
you know you have the answer for the problem that afflicts all mankind and you refuse to share it. That's the most hateful thing a person can do. Share the gospel. Share the good news. Tell people about Jesus. That's the most loving thing you could do. You'll be accused of being holier than thou. You'll be accused of judging people. That's okay. That's okay. You can deal with that. Jesus was, was scourged, right? Skin ripped off his, his back, his body. He was beaten. His beard was pulled out. He was spit upon. He was mocked. He was crucified. He didn't even resemble a man on the cross. And you're worried about somebody giving you a hard time and saying you're judging them? Because you're trying to tell them the truth? Maybe you need a thicker skin than that. Amen? Maybe you remember that if we suffer here... For Christ's sake, that is a good thing, not a bad thing. We had better learn to love mankind enough to give them the good news. Okay? And we better learn to love the Lord enough to be obedient to Him and give the good news. So, He said the day that day will come as a thief in the night. Jesus is coming back. Guarantee that. One billion, I can't even put a percentage on that because he's coming back. That's a definite. He's coming back. Are you preparing for that day? Are you preparing yourself for that day? Are you telling people about that day? Are you looking forward to that day? I have a scripture on my work um, that I have up on my, you know, back there at the, uh, at the base. I have on my uh, cabinet. You know, and it's a scripture in Revelation that talks about that he'll wipe away every tear from their eyes. You know, there'd be no more sorrow, crying, you know, more death. And I have that up on my wall so people can see it. Because I, I want people to think about that. I want people to at maybe potentially ask me questions about that. Well, I definitely will share with them when I get back up there. But the thing is, is that's my reminder that this world... It's temporary. What's coming is eternal. So my perspective has always got to be looking towards the eternal while I live in this temporary. And while I live in this temporary, remember that I'm just passing through. I'm an ambassador for Christ. I'm a pilgrim. Not This is not my home. My home is there. I'm looking to that kingdom. I'm looking that way. I'm looking to his heavenly kingdom. Keep your perspective right. We have a job to do while we're here. And thank God that God gives us so many blessings while we're here. We get a blessing to see this beautiful creation that he's made. And imagine if this is as breathtaking as it is, and it is breathtaking. Can you only imagine what a perfect creation will be without sin? Without without sin. Oh man, I'm looking forward to that day. I'm looking forward to the day when I don't have to tell another family member goodbye. I'm looking forward to that day when I don't have to stand over the grave of a, of a loved one. I'm looking forward to that day. I'm looking forward to that day when there are no more deaths and there's no more tears looking forward to that day see if you only get caught up in this world and this thing this time then you'll be depressed I mean you'll 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 look and say what's the point well the point is that this place here is dying because of sin mankind sin we got people to reach out to we got people that we need to to give the word of God and show the love of God to so let's do that while we're still here Amen. Okay. Um, so, another one. One more to reinforce the point. Let's go. Uh, chapter 25, Matthew chapter 25. Uh, verse 1. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. 
and five of them were wise and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. Then all his virgins arose and trimmed their lamps, and the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you, but go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Afterward, came also the other virgins saying to the Lord or saying Lord Lord open to us but he answered and said verily I say unto you I know you not watch therefore for you know neither the day nor the hour wherein the son of man cometh so again we have a parable that the Lord's giving you know in although our chapters in our bible says 24 and 25 you know, he didn't stop talking and then say, chapter 25. You know, he was continuing to make these points. In this chapter 25 here, in this this parable about the ten virgins, several things to note here. Most One of the most important ones to me is um, in verse 10. When he says, and while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. This calls back to me for the uh, the ark, Noah's ark, because the Lord shut the door. And when he shut that door, Noah and his family, who put, you know, Noah, who had put his faith in God, built the ark, did what God told him to do, brought the animals in, his family in. When God shut the door, those in the ark were saved, but the world was condemned, destroyed. You know, and it reminds me of that, the door was shut. You know, there's coming a day that the door will be shut. I pray that Christians everywhere are not like these foolish virgins who weren't prepared, who weren't ready, who did nothing to prepare for that day. You see, when when you talk about it, they went they went forth, all ten went forth, right? To 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 meet the bridegroom. But the five wise and there were five foolish. The the foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. I don't know about you if you've ever seen a, a, a lamp without oil, but you know it don't work too good <laughs> because there's no fuel. It's not going to do what it needs to do. Maybe they were anticipating, you know, that the Lord wasn't tearing long. Maybe they thought it was just in the daytime that he was coming, so they didn't bring extra oil. They didn't prepare. They didn't have it ready. But these these five that were wise, they took oil in their vessels with their lamps. So they prepared. So they went forth to wait for the bridegroom, but they went forth prepared to wait. If the night gets long, we're we're ready to go. We have we have lamps. And they did, they all fell asleep. Bible says so. Verse five. While the bridegroom tarried. They all slumbered and slept. You know, we know that the Lord is coming back. We know 100% guarantee he's coming back. But it's as if some of the church has just got tired of waiting. Some of the church has gone about and created a whole doctrine of of evil and sin called uh, dominionism. Where they think they're going to go and take over the world for Jesus. And that's going to usher in the kingdom of God. They're trying to do it through their own strength. Through their own hand. It's a vile, evil doctrine. 
because it deceives man into thinking that he has it in his own hand to bring about God's plans and purposes. And that's a lie. God is sovereign. And in the day and the hour that he decides, that's when he'll send Jesus. But we know he will send Jesus. We can count on that. But it's amazing how all the church slept. Verse 5, right? They slumbered and slept. All of them. And there was a period that this church, not just our little church, right? I'm talking about globally. The church fell into religion. Fell into dead worship. Not There's no heart in it. There's no love for Christ. There's just this... Uh, This outward holiness, no inward fire and passion for Jesus, no love for our neighbor, no love for God. It's just like it just cooled off into a lukewarm kind of outside, I don't even know what you call it. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. When did it become okay for the church to just Quit being the church and start being just organized groups of, of folks that separate and isolate themselves away from each other. We are the church, the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're supposed to be obeying this, his word. We're supposed to be following this. This is our guidance, not some book or manual that's put out by some some governing body somewhere it's this this is what matters the holy word of god this is what directs us this is what guides us but men being corrupt men decide to you know we're going to add to that we're going to we're going to add our traditions the pharisees did the same thing they added traditions. And they and they made void the word. They didn't they, they didn't encourage people, they discouraged people. The church today, I mean, I, I'm not kidding you, before all this before all this COVID thing, in this COVID thing, people are losing their lives. I'm not saying that it's good, but God can bring good out of a situation like this, at least in this time. The church is we're supposed to be. Figuring out the fact that we have a relationship with Jesus Christ and it's not associated to four walls. You're you're my brother and sister in Christ. Doesn't matter where you're at. You can be around the world on the other side of the planet. You're my brother and sister in Christ. If you love Jesus Christ, if he's your Lord, you've repented of your sins and trusted him, we're in the same body. We're part of the same body. We don't have to go to the same building. We're the same body. That's what this thing right here should be be teaching us about repentance, about examining ourselves to see if we're in the faith, to see if our faith is built on a building or is it built on the Holy Word of God. Are we going to stand for this? Are we going to crumble because we, we can't get together in four walls and a roof? We don't forsake the gathering together of the brethren. I'm going to tell you right now, we talk more now, brothers and sisters in Christ, man, we talk more now than we did when we were meeting in the building. We talk, I don't know about you personally. I, I can't t- speak for you, but for me and, and, and my wife, we're talking to people every day. Every day. And we have the blessed ability to encourage people every day just such a great thing to be able to encourage people to to follow Jesus to be out here in the community where we're at witnessing to people about Jesus I pray you were doing that we have to do that time's running out guys you know Jolianne um, and I'll just speak to this Jolianne put together this Bible study for women and uh, she did this, you know, and it's her ministry to do this. She wants to reach out to women and encourage the ladies and, and stuff. And uh, and last week, you know, Marsha was listening to it. I happened to be in the living room because I was doing doing some uh, study 
while she was doing that, and it was fantastic. It was absolutely fantastic. And, and she's doing that on Zoom, right? So that way you guys can see each other and talk and, and just as if you were sitting in the same room. It's amazing. Okay? Now, last night, Marsha and I were out doing some ministry work. We weren't able to get on last night. And sadly, there there really wasn't anybody, you know, too many people that got on. I think there was only two two people on there, you know, Julianne and her mom. And, and guys, I'm going to tell you, you're missing out. You're missing out on a prime opportunity for you to get blessed by God through that teaching and bless someone else right you could you could turn off the TV right turn off the TV for a half hour or an hour and tune in to that Bible study and do what God tells us to do to exhort one another daily you can do that but you know if you choose to just you know, put MacGyver above, uh, you know, your relationship with Christ. Well, that's that's between you and the Lord, but I wouldn't do it. Okay? You need to get with God. And you need to get with your brothers and sisters when there's an opportunity to do it. Do it. Do it. What's keeping you from doing it? Encourage one another daily. Don't forsake to gather together the brethren. Don't forsake it. We can gather here, social media. We can gather by calling each other on the phone. We can gather from six feet away at times, right? Jesus is coming soon. Everybody was asleep. The call went out that the bridegroom is coming. The call went out that the bridegroom is coming. And they all woke up. Five were prepared. They had extra oil. They had oil. They trimmed their lamps. They got their lamps lit up and they were ready for the bridegroom. And five weren't. No oil. No preparation. While they ran out to go do that, the bridegroom came and the door was shut. Jesus is coming soon, so we cannot afford a minute of time uh, uh, that's squandered, you know, it's just squandered. Wow, if we could take a look at our lives, I wonder how we would justify, oh, I don't have time to read. Oh, I don't have time to call this person. Oh, I don't have time to get onto Zoom on and, 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 and listen to, you don't? Really? I suggest you do. Amen. So Thursday nights, ladies, Zoom. Get Connect with Jolianne Malloy. Connect with her. Get that. It's easy and it's wonderful. You can talk to each other. It's way better than when we call on the phone and, and see each other on the phone. It's way better. Zoom is way better. I mean, it's you don't have all the, the lag and stuff like that. It, it's, it looks fantastic. And you guys can talk like we're talking right now, except... You and I would be talking together like this, interchanging and conversating. It's great. Well, we have a lot more, but we don't have a lot more time tonight. So I think we're going to stop right there. There's examples given in Scripture about the suddenness the, 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 uh, that the Lord is coming back and it's going to be quick. And we need to be watching. We need to be waiting for Him. We need to be looking for Him. We need to be faithful in our service while we wait for Him. Not get discouraged, not to get off track, not to backslide away from him, but to be fervent in our business for the Lord and in our love for him and our neighbors, right? Brothers and sisters in Christ, we need to love one another. And, and we got to continue that love has got to be, if you know, full. It's got to be full because iniquity, sin is increasing in the world. And the only way for you to not be overcome by all of that stuff is if your love for God and your love for your neighbor is at full strength. You won't be overcome with that. You won't be depressed by that. You'll be in, you, you, your eyes will be firmly fixed on Jesus Christ. And your heart, your heart will have a love for mankind. One that will say, I, I got to reach them with the gospel. I got to turn them from their sin. 
God had called him because God is, he wants him to be saved. He wants them to have new life. He wants them to, to have a relationship with him. Yeah. So let's uh, do our best to fill up the kingdom. Amen. As many people as we can. Let's reach them with the gospel, the good news. Let's reach them. Let's let them know they have a problem. God has a solution. And his name is Jesus. Amen. I love you guys. Pray that you have a blessed night in Jesus. And we'll, uh, Lord willing, that we live. We'll see you tomorrow night. Encouraging Word broadcast at 6 o'clock. God bless you. Don't forget Zoom on Thursday night. Connect with Jolie Ann. Serious ladies, you need to do this. You will be blessed. I'm telling you, Brian and I were in the wings. And we were blessed. So, good study. God bless you. Have a blessed night in Jesus.